we're starting off with a lot more people already in here. Hello, everyone, and welcome in. I already see Adam in there, Tiny Goomba, um, name I can't pronounce, I'm so sorry, and Aaron, of course, who is going to be modding for today. Hello, hello, everyone. Lizard time, yes, lizards. Morning. Hello, McRona. Welcome in. Welcome to the stream, everyone. We've already been hyping it up, clearly. Um, <laughs> today is Reptile Day, so we are going to be talking about, this is going to be the last, um, animal video. Hello, hello. This is going to be the last animal live stream we're going to be having um, in terms of animal anatomy and all that fun stuff. Um, and then we're going to be going into kind of our more common, kind of, or not common, but our more chill kind of streams after this. Um, hello, Charlotte. Welcome in. But don't worry. I'm hoping that this one will be fun. I'm excited for the final illustration because I haven't drawn a snake person in a while. <laughs> um, because we are going to be focusing on snakes at the end of the stream. Um, but before we get going with that, let's do our little ad reads. So if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings because we're not just a YouTube channel. We are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us on Patreon where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots. So be sure to check those out before they are gone. All right. Oh, lots of people. More people. Hello. Welcome in Fancy Dinosaur and Bunny Doll. Welcome into the chat. And welcome into the stream. Okay. Where is it? There's my notes. Like I said, we're going to be talking about reptiles today. I always have notes off to the side because I do research before these. Um, because I do know a lot of it off the top of my head, but I want to make sure and that I have it organized so my brain is organized. <laughs> a lot of people here. Yes, I'm glad. I'm glad people like reptiles. I'm also glad the white-lipped python won. <laughs> I put it first in the poll hoping it would win. <laughs> but um, pressure's on, Jesse. I'm okay with pressure. I do best under pressure. Okay. So reptiles are much closer to humans than fish in terms of the skeletons, right? If we think about like what fish were like last week, we talked about invertebrates, invertebrates, right? Invertebrates have no skeletons, if you remember, if you were there. If you weren't there, you know, you can check it out. Um, but you have a gecko. I love geckos. Hello, Becca. Reptile's my favorite. Yeah, I would love a snake in the future. My mom is horrified of worms or anything that wriggles. So I can't have a snake, but I do have a bird and I have a fish. Um, so she'll live with those but I do really want a ball python in the future. Um, but yeah, so obviously there were more reptiles that walked along the earth a long time ago before us, which were dinosaurs, but they're, you know, long since extinct. So let's write that down, so reptiles. In terms. Hello, soft and feral, welcome in. Oh, there. I hope I spelled that right. There's <laughs> skeletons. You have a fish too? What kind of fish? I have a betta. His name is Halcyon. I recently bought him new plants. Because I was getting tired of the ones that were in there. And he seems to love them, so that's good. I got Amazon swords and a new bias. So it kind of looks like a leafy forest right now. In terms of the skeletons are much more. Similar, I guess that's correct, similar. To humans compared. And feel free to always ask questions. I am completely cool with questions. Um, so if you have anything to ask, gladly I will answer them. Um, in terms of the skeletons are much more similar to humans than fish. Hi! Hi! It's like an orange color. Then I'm assuming it's either a parrotfish or a goldfish. How big is it? Are there alpha fish? I mean, <laughs> depends on what you consider an alpha. <laughs> lizards, lizards, we will be talking about lizards. How is everybody? I'm doing good. How about you, Soft and Feral? 
used to be. Reptiles. Long ago. As dinosaurs. Right? So reptiles in terms of the skeletons are much more similar to humans than fish, but, you know, still very, very different. And there used to be more reptiles long ago. In from dinosaurs, obviously we don't really have any dinosaurs here anymore. Um, because reptiles used to really dominate the planet, but now not really so much anymore. <laughs> I think it's fish that dominate the planet now, but a little bit different. Um, so obviously we don't have an amphibian stream, so we're going to talk just a little bit about amphibians, bring them up so we can talk about the difference between the two. So amphibians. Versus reptiles. I'm going to keep this one nice and short. Just like the fish stream, um, there isn't too, too much to say about reptiles. There is a little bit more to say than fish, um, but I'm hoping for another kind of big illustration like what we did with the little Dumbo octopus boy. Good day, everyone. Hello, Gigi. Welcome in. Dinosaurs, you say? Hmm. Well, yeah, di most dinosaurs were considered reptiles. Um, nowadays, though, the closest rep the closest animal we have today that relates back to our dinosaurs are our birds. And good, good to hear that you are doing good, soft and feral. Amphibians versus reptiles. So amphibians. They are mostly frogs, toads, newts, and salamanders. In terms of their skeletons, amphibians and reptiles are very, very similar. It's mostly just the make of the non-skeletal portions that are very different. Um, so frogs, newts, and um, toads and salamanders. Um, usually spend part of their lives water gel covered eggs what? whoa that's cool Oh no, it's still going. <laughs> My brother's in. Hello. Hi. Um, you found a toad yesterday. That's pretty sick. Look at this tiny paintbrush. What? Look at this tiny paintbrush. Have you never seen a paintbrush that small? Dude, before? it's so small. It's okay, so cute. Okay, leave. I need, what? To I need to stream. Oh, you're still streaming? Yes. Hey, y'all. Leave. <laughs> Sorry. I thought that this turned off my mic. How strange. Okay, I don't know what that does then. <laughs> Thought I heard that salamanders can regenerate their limbs. I believe all reptiles can do that. Most reptiles, well, lizards can. Snakes obviously can't, they don't have limbs. <laughs> I don't think alligators can either. The fish is about like two fingers big. Oh, that's a big fish. It might be a parrotfish then, or a koi. I <laughs> just need to brother. Um, 16 people, nice. Uh, so da -da -da. Every time I try to be good at digital art and I fail, don't focus on trying to be good on the first try. It takes a long time. I was terrible the first time I did digital art. Um, that was like seven years ago, so <laughs> long time. And congrats on getting your tablet updated. It's pretty sick. Uh, gel covered. I stopped updating my tablet a long time ago because this tablet's old. <laughs> Random cameo. Yeah. He just likes to barge into my room. Sorry if that sounded kind of harsh. I didn't know like, my, <laughs> my mic was so on. Um, I thought I turned off, did it off. I guess I didn't. Um, gel covered eggs. Sorry, I got a bit distracted. They have gel covered eggs and they have smooth sticky skin right reptiles 
a bro cameo. That's rare. I mean, I have family come in sometimes. Reptiles consist of turtles. There are like five major classifications that you can kind of find them by, right? It's this turtles, snakes, lizards, alligators, and crocodiles. All right, so those are the major ones. Turtles, turtles and tortoises are kind of like you know, lumped together. They are very similar, right? <laughs> They're basically the same. If you actually look at the skeletons, the only thing that are different is just like how big their hand skeletons, skull, uh, well, hand skulls, the uh, bones, that's the word. <laughs> their phalanges, how big they are. I want to buy a giant tablet that has a screen. They all cost like 800 to 1500. I believe Hueyon has one that's about 500 bucks. My best friend has one of those. Sea turtle legs are very round. Yes, they are. You have a pet eastern box turtle? I love turtles. Turtle snakes, lizards, alligators, and crocodiles. Reptiles don't spend their lives in water. Like, they don't spend their lives in water, but they do enjoy going in the water sometimes. I know that snakes actually very much love to swim. Pythons like to swim. And they're fast, too. If you've never seen a python swimming, they're fast. <laughs> Don't spend lives in water. Hard shelled eggs. Hard and scaly. Right, so reptiles are a lot harder. Like, they have more armor, right? Amphibians are very squishy. Right, snakes are very squishy too, but they have a layer of, like, you know, scales on there to kind of help protect them. I'm in the same boat looking for screen tablets because my neck is tiring and aching. Yeah. Screen tablets are very nice. I, I, I do encourage getting a non-screen one first just so you can practice, just in case if, like, you... Um, don't have that no, uh, screen one day, right? So you can work with a non-screen tablet. Um, I spent the first, oh God, it was, I got my first screen tablet four years ago. So before that I used nothing but non-screen tablets. Um, so I learned to work with both. Okay. Crocodiles are ambush predators, yeah. So like I mentioned, right, not too, too much that we're going to talk about in terms of reptiles, but normally this is where, you know, I'd kind of bring up a skeleton, right, kind of show you all of those, right, but the fun thing about uh, skeletons with reptiles is that unlike birds, fish, and mammals, Where if you understand one, you can understand. Oops, under can understand. Most of the rest tiles have a few very distinct uh, and different skeletons. Right, so unlike birds, fish, and mammals, where if you understand one, you can most likely understand most of the rest, like, right? You kind of look at mammals, most of them have very, very similar structures, just placed in different ways. Um, birds are like almost all the same, fish are like almost all the same, <laughs> right? Um, if you understand one, you can kind of understand the rest, 
right? Reptiles have a few very distinct and different skeletons, right? If you kind of think about different reptiles that you see, a lot of them have very, very different structures, right? Some of them have no limbs. Some of them don't have rib cages, right? Reptiles are very, very strange animals. They're very ancient, strange animals. So they have a lot of different classifications and skeletons. All right, it's time to look at the chat. Hello, Ethereum. Ethereum, welcome in. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, and Elp, welcome in. Welcome in to both of you. I have a hand me down whack on that has Mysterians on stains on his own health. Oh dear. I've been using the same non screen tablet since maybe 2015 or 2016. Yeah. I really like turtles. I found one on a walk home and I'm keeping it as a pet for now. Um, don't keep wild turtles as pets. If you've kind of found one that was either from a breeder or if you need to like help it, um, then you can, but you really shouldn't keep, if you find an animal in the wild, you shouldn't keep it. You should try to set it back free um, because you're most likely taking it from its natural habitat, right? And you don't know if it has anything attached to it right some especially especially wild animals they might not be you know monitored or they're probably not monitored right um but yeah be careful um what's your favorite reptile chat aaron has asked um hey jesse did your mic change i got a new headset um so yeah my mic did change <laughs> it sounds a little bit i think it sounds a little bit worse i know some people are like oh it sounds great i'm like i don't know if i like it um so i'm probably gonna get another new mic um <laughs> but it's because now i'm using the light speed um logitech headphones which are really really nice um but yeah I enjoy snakes too, they're a runner up. I think my favorite reptile is snakes. I love snakes. When I was really young, I really wanted a bearded dragon, but yeah. Now I just really, really want a snake. <laughs> but yeah, don't keep live, don't keep wild animals as pets. Um, make sure if you are adopting a pet, then you make, make sure that you know how to take care of it. Do your research. Make sure that you are providing the appropriate habitats. Absolutely no pet is cheap. Either get them from breeders or from adoption centers. And yes, Yuri is in. Hello, she is the animation instructor here at Wing Canvas. <laughs> I love dragons. Wasn't sure if they qualified as reptiles. Technically they are, though their anatomy matches birds a little bit more. We did talk about that during the bird stream. All right. Lizards. So let me pull up the lizard skeleton just to start. All right, I love this one. It was posed. <laughs> it's a posed skeleton. I think that's really cool. I'm a very big skeleton person. I would love like a reptile skull or skeleton or something like that. Um, they cost a lot though. Reptiles cost a lot. Some smaller snake skeletons aren't as much, but man, I would also like a horse skeleton or horse horse skull, and those cost a lot. I live in Arizona. You can rarely see when but one almost confronted me. Really, diamondback rattlesnakes? Yeah, those things are wild. I'm only writing my position so Jesse doesn't have to say it all the time. I said it anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry, but hey, welcome in. They have the same features as reptiles, the only difference that they don't exist. Sad boy hours. You can buy skeletons? Yes, you can. I have a few streams back. I remember I showed my skulls and my face <laughs> um, for the mammal stream. If you want to see my face. I mean, there's old videos on the Wing Canvas channel that have my face on them, but... Um, uh, back at the mammal stream, if you want to see my skull collection, it's there. <laughs> the ribs are thin. Yes, they are. Jesse, you could 3D print a skeleton. Be... Yeah, but it's not as cool. It's not as cool, Aaron. That's why we gotta make illustrations of them or stories, honestly. Dragons. Alright, lizards. Our plantigrade, if you remember what plantigrade is. Plantigrade. We talked about plantigrade, digitigrade, and oh, I forget the last one. It's in my notes. Digitigrade and unguligrade, right? We've talked about plantigrade, digitigrade, and unguligrade. 
limbs, right? So plantigrade is, means that they are walking on the soles of their feet, right? So their entire foot is on the ground. So we are plantigrade, most mammals are plantigrade, or some mammals are plantigrade, um, like elephants, I believe, are plantigrade, um, and tigers are plantigrade as well. No? No, they're not. Oh, wait. No, I think they are. Kangaroos are plantigrade. <laughs> um, so those animals are plantigrade, but things like cats and dogs are digitigrade. So lizards are plantigrade because their entire foot is on the ground. If you take a look at their skeleton, right, you can see these are the leg portions and then the entire foot is down here. Same with the arm, right? This is the shoulder blade. This is like the bicep. This is the um, forearm. And then this is the whole hand, right? You can kind of think of it like that. So lizards are plantigrade. Excuse me. Uh, my, I deleted all of my notes for a second. That scared me. However, their legs are attached. Differently. pelvis. <laughs> Walk on their soles. I remember something for once. Yes, great. Bone tongue. No tongues or bones. Tongues are muscles. Tongues are one of our few external muscles, just like how teeth are one of our few, our only external bones. Yeah, I believe a tongue is one big muscle. Either that or it's... No, it has to be a muscle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna debate about that. Anyway, tongues are not bones. <laughs> Things are attached differently to the pelvis. And ours. Stick out. out sideways. Lizard skeletons. Very similar to gators and crocodiles. Don't some lizards have an extended tongue attached to a bone? You're gonna have to Google that one for me. I didn't know about that one. <laughs> I didn't know about that one, so I'm not sure. So lizards are plantigrade, so legs that are attached differently to the pelvis, but legs um, are attached differently to the pelvis than ours. So even though lizards and ourselves are both plantigrade, um, their legs stick out sideways on their pelvises while ours point downwards, right? So we're like one long stand-up pole. They're like kind of supported on the sides. If you think of it kind of like a bus, <laughs> I guess. It's kind of like the wheels on the sides of an axis or a car. Um, and lizard skeletons are very similar to gators and crocodiles, right? Gators and crocodiles are so, so similar in terms of their skeletons right super super similar i think it's just the skull that's a little bit different um crocodiles skulls are very very are much oh my goodness i hope you can't hear outside my window there's a storm going on and the thunder is loud and it's scaring me um but yeah i think the only difference is that gators have a thicker skull compared to crocodiles So they're quite similar, but this uh, skull is made up just a little bit differently. So that's with lizards. Oh, I've reached the end of my page once again. What the? I heard it. Did you? Yeah. We've been having really bad storms for the past few days, kind of in my area. 
there was a really bad storm, like really, really bad storm that happened earlier this week. And uh, I got so spooked that I screamed. <laughs> the lightning was right out, like right outside. Was so scary. Let's move all these. Actually, no, let's just move the lizard one because the others might be brought down. Yeah, cool. Okay. Like how long croc skulls are. They look so scary. Yeah, it's horrifying. Their like, skulls are terrifying. If you want a terrifying looking skull, you look up a Bobby Russo. It's a it's a mammal, so it's not a, a lizard. But Bobby Russo. If anyone wants to know, if anyone reads my webcomic, a Bobby Russo is what I use to draw Gulrathel's skull, so the demon. Because those horns are horrifying. Reminds of Jurassic Park, yeah. I mean, that makes sense, I guess. So the next reptile, you can kind of just read over here, is turtles. Twiddles. So it's turtles. Alright, so let's bring up that skeleton real quick. Alright, look at this guy. Look how weird this is. I love turtles. Look how weird this skeleton is. Like, what? So turtles have a shell that replaces uh, that doesn't seem right. Uh T I T <laughs> No, don't do this. first. <laughs> I am two brain cells. E I R. It replaces their rib cage. Alright, so their shell replaces their rib cage to protect internal organs. Listen, I like to be- listen, I- <laughs> I'm like- I like to think that I'm smart, but- Oh, it's chameleons that have a tongue that's attached to the- Hoyoid bone. Hoyoid bone. Interesting. Chameleon was the second- was what got second place in the poll. It was the panther chameleon. And I was like- <laughs> I saw the panther chameleon, I'm like, I really hope the python wins, but <laughs> I wouldn't mind a chameleon either, but I just prefer snakes. <laughs> so the vertebrae Oh, this one is vertebrae. Vertebrae curves. Under the top. Of the shell. Neck. Oh, let's make this another point. Neck. So you know when turtles like retract into their into their shell, right, to for safety, right? It's a defense mechanism, right? If you've never seen what the skull does or what the skeleton does, that's it, right over here. I should have cropped this. Whoops. 
Let me crop it now, actually. Uh... There we go. All right, so if you've never seen what it looks like when a turtle kind of retracts itself back in, well, this is it. All right, I'm gonna have to hide this again. But yeah, so if you've never seen what the spine does when it bends, I like how their eyes go in different directions. Yeah, that's pretty sick. I'm like their eyes can kind of go in different ways. I feel like that's too much for our brains to handle, but they'd be like cool with that. You know, they're built different. I mean, literally, but you know. <laughs> Right, see so if you've ever seen what the spine does, it literally bends backward into this U shape. Right, so this is where the backbone or the vertebrae is. And when it retracts itself in, the tail obviously goes back into the shell. And the vertebrae can curve into this S, which is really freaky looking. Um, but that's how it protects its head inside of its shell. And it can also just kind of bring its legs up. Some turtles cannot retract into their shells. Yep, so some can't, but most of them can. I believe it's soft shell that can't retract as well. I don't think some snapping turtles can't either, if I remember correctly. Oh, it's been a while. I focus so much on mammals that it's like sometimes the others I don't remember. But <laughs> I'm going to just keep this one up. So again, haha, if you want the working file with the rest of the images, you're gonna have to go to Patreon. Um, last but not least, let's talk about snakes. Pretty sure we all know what a snake skeleton looks like. This is the easiest one. Alright, snakes are danger noodles. Look at this guy. I love snakes. It's one big spine. I wish. <laughs> So snake snakes. I was gonna do a soft shell turtle as one of the pole things, and I kept I couldn't stop laughing at it, so I was like, I don't think I should do a soft shell turtle. <laughs> Cause they're so dumb looking. If you really want to see a dumb looking turtle, please look up the soft shell turtle. It's so like awful. <laughs> I don't know why it looks like that. I love snakes, they're the best. Yeah, they are. So snakes. Uh um, have a very simple skeleton. One bone noodle, bone noodle. <laughs> That's not how you spell long, long spine. And rib cage. However, so they lack all limbs. However, their skull functions. can be more complex. So some have venom. Is it? Actually, no, that might not be correct. I don't think that's correct, actually. Now that I think about it. Um this part is some snakes can unhinge mandible to swallow food or swallow prey I suppose Right, so, so uh, while the rest of the skeleton, right, it's one long spine <laughs> with some, you know, rib cage elements, right? It's all just a lot of ribs, right? You think, here's here's a weird question, right? You think if, like, you ran your finger along this, it would sound like a xylophone? Dunno, man. But, um, 
right? So even though it's just one long rib cage with a spine, right? The skull functions can be a little bit more complex, right? So some snakes have the ability to completely detach this lower bone here, right? They can reattach it, but they can completely detach this, the mandible, right? So if their prey is very, very large, they have the ability to just, you know, break their own bones so they can eat it, <laughs> right? Which is pretty cool, um, right? It's a, it's a concept that I really like drawing. I really love drawing unhinged jaws. Um, but yeah, I want my hand inside the mouth of a snake. No, you do not. If it can unhinge its jaw, then it will eat you. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, that sounds terrible. I don't think I'd want my uh, my hand inside of a snake's jaw. I feel like it's a bad idea, personally. <laughs> Whoops. Edit. Canvas size. Oh, why is Photoshop still open? I can just close that. I was like, why is that still open? Okay, let's retract this 6,000 5,500 ooh that's gonna be close it's okay let's go we're fine we're good okay oh god yeah no that seems like a bad idea I'm just gonna say that <laughs> um but in terms of the lesson portion they have a windpipe to help them breathe while consuming prey yeah I mean we all have different we got like a a windpipe and a air and a a food pipe. The trachea and the esophagus. <laughs> um, but they probably have an extra one that helps them breathe. It's kind of like when frogs swallow. I know not a reptile, but when frogs swallow, they can use their eyes to help push down their food. When it when a frog blinks, if you've kind of seen like when their mouth is open, you'll see that like their eyes kind of retract back into their bodies. Helps them push down food. <laughs> the research. I remember carrying a snake that was as big as me at the time. Yeah, they had like a big like um, python or constrictor at, uh, at a zoo that I went to once and they let myself and my parents hold it. Pretty sick. Kind of like when I held an owl. That one was pretty cool too. I held a barn owl on my arm. That was pretty sick. Um, but yeah, in terms of the lesson portion, we are complete. Okay, 437. That's not too bad. We can probably do something a little bit bigger. All right. They always choke on their food. Well, yeah, but that's mostly because they go down the wrong way. Um. I believe. Or if it's too large for us to swallow as well. Ooh. How large is this one going to be? Let's make this... Because I want this to be a long canvas instead of like a... Kind of like the dragon lady that we did. I, all of the... You notice how all of the animal characters I've done so far are boys? We need to do a girl. I want to do a snake woman. Humans are having a special windpipe for food so they can choke. I see. Mommy, was the winner again? The winner was the... Oh. Oh, can you still hear me? What? What is using my... Hang on. Then what's using my microphone? That's so weird. I guess it's my my live... My camera. <laughs> my camera is picking up my sound then because clearly my headphones just died, but you can still hear me according to OBS. So that's nice. What is using my sound then? I guess it is my camera. That's so weird. I'm going to switch that. Because it must sound weird. It must sound strange. I'm going to switch that then. Hey, yo, hello, wisdom words. Welcome in. Can I switch that? There should be a way to switch. Uh, mic. Let's use this. Hopefully that sounds a little bit different. Oh, it definitely. <laughs> yeah, because now that ah, that should sound a little bit better. The live streaming camera might sound a little bit worse. That should be a bit better. Magical mic. Yeah, I've got two, but there we go. 
use wrong input. Yeah, I did. So it should sound different <laughs> now. I think I switched my audio, but there we go. But hello, welcome, Mr. Words. Um, we were starting the snake lady. Right. It actually sounds like you were in my room. Oh, nice. I have like broadcaster, whatever that means. Yeah. I I do want a different microphone, just overall. Yeah. It has it literally set. I think I have my settings set to radio up. Broadcaster one, something like that. It was the best sounding one of this mic. They were they told it that this mic sounded great. And I was like, now you sound like a DJ. Oh, do I? Does it actually sound good? I hope so. Because when I recorded it back, it didn't sound that great. It sounds like okay. Uh, let's see. Let's find this bad boy. So the white lipped python. Will it not let me open that wrong? This is what it looks like. It's this beautiful looking thing. Okay. I wanted one with the the basic body I can kind of understand, right? But this snake is cool because its scales are iridescent in the sun. Right? It's beautiful. I think my favorite thing about it, my favorite comment about it, is um, this snake looks like a heartbreaker. I think I love that. <laughs> you might want to switch it back. Why? <laughs> Does it not sound good? If you actually own these, you can, but it's really hard to. Wait, so I'm going to do a snake woman. I'm kind of thinking, wait, can I do this? Your other mic sounded better? Okay, then I'll switch. Hello, Faye. Welcome in. the other one that should be different oh that's a little bit loud we should go to this one then got it yeah okay then i'm gonna have to kind of switch around with this one that one might sound better then that means that this live streaming camera sounds better than my head that set that's so annoying i'm gonna have to get a new one i hate all of this <laughs> okay that's so irritating Ugh. I might want to clip on them. Now I'm just kind of controlling how loud I am. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Back to normal. Yeah, this is with my, my camera mic then. Man, that's super annoying. Okay, because but then this one might pick up all the sound effects around me, which is also really annoying. Uh, less control. Oh, well. Okay, rainbow snake. Now again, because it's like one long rib cage, I'm gonna attach it the same way that you would like a mermaid, right? It's just kind of contrailing off of the rest of the body using the hips as kind of a way to control it. If I was actually to draw a snake person, like really according to the, the anatomy then I would just make it one long like this but that feels a little bit wrong <laughs> you know what I'm saying so I'm gonna kind of go along with hue and anatomy just a little bit more for this one in terms of a pelvic bone yes thank you for sticking with us during technical stuff that happens sometimes <laughs> uh goodness gracious yeah I want a clip-on mic. My only thing with a clip-on mic is that it's just, I'm not gonna have like a place where I can like click it to like turn it off, I guess. That's gonna be annoying. Bye, Adam. Thanks so much for joining. Okay. You know what, with the dragon lady that I did a while ago, I did a kind of more regal design. So maybe I'll do like kind of a look for this one. I also, you know what? I'm gonna have her head going the other way because the last snake person I did was face, or the last kind of long character that I did was facing that way. I always have a tendency to go to the left 
So let's have a character go to the right. I keep forgetting that I can't use my pan scroll. That's programmed onto my tablet. Snakes don't have ears, so I'm just gonna give her pointed ones because I think those are more fun. <laughs> I can't spell, it's okay, me neither, apparently. I can spell perfectly fine when it's not on stream, but. You know, can't win them all. <laughs> I've never heard what my 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 camera actually sounds like. Like my camera microphone. I've always worked with like the headset microphones. I'm kind of annoyed that the Razer one sounds better than the Logitech one. Like that's super annoying. You have inner ears. Yeah. Lots of reptiles and animals have inner ears. Um, mammals are one of the few animals in the animal kingdom that actually have external ears. Right, fish have internal ears, reptiles do, birds do, right? So you could draw Medusa style. I could. I'm gonna be legit, I was never a big fan of Medusa. <laughs> like, I know, like, the snake hair is pretty cool, but I'm like, <sighs> you know, it just takes a while to draw, I suppose. Kind of like the idea of like a snake guardian. So that means I have to draw a weapon. I like drawing weapons. Kind of like covering your own ears. That's how they interpret sound. Yeah. The thing with snakes is that I always tend to make the designs a little bit sharper whenever I draw them. Hello Gabriel, welcome in. Glad to have you in. This design might take me longer just because like if it's a warrior, then I have to worry about the outfit as well. <clears throat> or a guardian of some kind. Because it's a snake. I'm kind of thinking as well about like, I really want it to be really long hair as well. <laughs> like really long. I'm kind of flowing hair as well. Can't wait to see how you paint the rainbow in this character. Yeah, this one I'm gonna use a lot more digital effects to get the scales down, because there are quicker ways to do scales. Um, with digital, you know, traditionally you gotta draw a bunch of them. Um, usually they say don't draw all of them, and like you shouldn't do that with digital either, but there are quicker ways to do that so that you can get all of them in, or the impression of all of them in, without having to draw all of them individually, which is really nice. You know what I mean? It's just a little bit easier that way. So again, kind of going along with the mermaid principle, using the hips as a way to divide the human from the animal. Or the human from the reptile, I suppose. This is epic. Thank you. Hello, Kips. Welcome in. Glad to see you here. I'm a 
really big fan of reptile people. One of the hardest um, kind of blended characters that I've ever done with, like, with the, like, kind of realistic <laughs> anatomy of the animal in mind was a crocodile. I guess because it's like the tail has a lot of muscle that humans don't have, obviously. It's like I had to think about how that would work. Oh my god, I'm trying to figure out how to make this look okay. So usually not a lot of snakes will lift up their tails other than like rattlesnakes just because they don't have a need to. So I'm like trying to think of how this pose is gonna work. Like I'm probably just gonna break some rules, but you know. Maybe I'll just play with perspective a little bit instead. So it's kind of like going like that. I don't really see fully scaled stuff in realistic pieces. Other times just put scales in certain areas. Yeah. However, I kind of want to show off the iridescent areas. I'm going to have to focus on where the light source is as well. I should learn how to draw scales. Yeah. Scales are tough. They are snake scales are different than crocodile scales, which are different than lizard scales, because a bunch of different animals have different scales, or different reptiles have different kind of ways their scales work. Scales are made of keratin, for those who don't know. They are made up of mostly keratin. And keratin is the same material that our fingernails are made out of. So basically their whole body is covered in thin layers of fingernails. <laughs> it's the same with elephant tusks um, and hooves. Hooves are big, big nails. That's basically it. Keratin. So if you've ever seen videos of like people tripping horses hooves, right? It doesn't hurt them. They actually prefer it because it is basically just like cutting your nails, right? If hooves grow way too long, it gets very, very uncomfortable for the horse. So you do have to trim them. All right, I know this is the reptile stream, but I'm talking about horse health. Um, <laughs> but you do need to trim them. It's kind of like how you need to shear sheep, right? It's like if you kind of leave on the wool for too long or if it's too big right it can really overheat the sheep and that's really bad for it <laughs> fingernail worm honestly that sounds like a really sick horror creature a fingernail worm i'm gonna draw that <laughs> you've given me the idea and now i must take it and use it i never knew that terrifying terrifying yeah the animal kingdom is weird Oh yes, and hello, Meltic Days, welcome in. I'm thinking that she's muscular. I love, because if this is a warrior, obviously she's gonna be a little bit more toned. I love drawing muscular characters. That's something that like, um, like toned characters. It's a really big, fun activity of mine. <laughs> it's gonna happen. A fingernail worm, it's gonna happen. I'll only send it to you though, no one else is. <laughs> Just to let it haunt your nightmares. I think they'll be sick. That's a joke, by the way. I will be sending it to everybody that I know if I do end up actually drawing it. Because I think that's a pretty cool concept. It's kind of like the... Oh no, I don't know what it's called. But like the, the Tooth Man, I think. For those who don't know, I am a horror artist. I do like drawing horror. Um, obviously, you won't see a lot of that on this channel, but I do really like drawing horror. You better have a leech mount. Oh, like a... Oh my god. Um, not a leech. There's this one... No, oh, I don't remember the name of it. <laughs> It's like, hi, hello, Trinity. Welcome in, Trinity Boss 52. Hello, welcome in. I don't remember the name of this creature. It's like, it has a it has a mouth. It's like, it's kind of like a leech, but it kind of goes like this. You know what I mean? It's like, you always see them in like the deep sea section of zoos, <laughs> or in the um. 
No, this is one place in Toronto. Uh, ah, it's the, uh, or they did have them in the ROM for a while when there was an ex a temporary exhibit for the deep sea, I believe. You can't change the point of rotation on the eBay, which is a little bit annoying, that's okay. Lamprey, that's the one. Yeah, lamprey. It'll have that mouth, but with more fingernails. <laughs> this head is too large, it needs to be smaller. If she's an adult. I draw a lot of kids, so it's like I have to, <laughs> I end up making the heads a lot larger, but if she's an adult, then this must be shorter or smaller. And this neck needs to be a little bit thicker. And she's also more muscular. Jaw just a smidge sharper as well. I'm probably gonna flip the canvas as well with this one because I am struggling with this face shape that is annoying me. Usually it doesn't annoy me this much. Yeah, we're getting close to the top of the yard. I'll finish this sketch and then we should be good. What? What weapon is fitting for a guardian snake person? You know what I've always found is like people are like, like, oh my god, this is like an insane person and I have like the knife. I always find that hammers are a lot more cool looking than a knife, you know? Like if you have like a like a warrior or a, some kind of like strong character, you know, there's like a sword and then there's like, I really love scythes as well, um, but it's like, you know, within design and stuff like that, but it's like, you, you know, you see you have this, have this warrior, it's like you see, you see swords all the time, right? And you're like, eh, that's, that's pretty cool, right? But I think that like a hammer is just a lot cooler. It seals stronger. Um, my friend said that it feels like a little un more unhinged. <laughs> Personally, I just like the design of hammers. I think they're just a little bit cooler. Trident spear, perhaps. I was thinking of a spear. A lot of snake characters end up having spears, I find. A trident would have fit well for the ocean animals we had last week. The spear, yeah. A lot of snake characters always end up having spears. Charities with double spear. Double ended spear. Actually that'd be kind of fun. What if you had like a long axe? I'm pretty sure that oh no, there is a name for that. It's not Lance. It's a Thor Thor like a hammer. I mean like a big hammer, dude. Like if we're talking about a hammer, I mean like if it's like fantasy weapons, I want one that's like as big as this, you know what I'm saying? Like it needs to be big. <laughs> I like huge hammers, like King DDD size big hammer, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Final fantasy level weapon. No, there's this type of- it's a halberd! That's what I'm thinking of. The type of, um, weapon. We could do a halberd. I love the look of those ones, too. Wild. These things are really cool. It's like a spear with an axe. <laughs> I think that looks really cool. We'll do a halberd. Monster Hunter weapons. I've never played Monster Hunter. My best friend is a really big fan of the Monster Hunter franchise, though. I have a lot of close friends, or I have a lot of friends who like Monster Hunter as well. A couple of close friends who really like Monster Hunter. I'm kind of going with this rings. Just you could try a flail. Oh, is that the like? Yeah, the the big chain ball and chain. That one's pretty unhinged too, but I'm kind of set on halberds, so we can get like a spear in there, because the spear kind of matches the long design as well. I guess that's why snake people always have beards, uh, spears. <laughs> Flails are really cool too. No, in games, I've never been a really big fan of them. They're always too slow. <laughs> I like really speedy weapons. It's like in Breath of the Wild, I always had like single-handed weapons or the spears. It's just the, everything else too slow. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of feeling like long. 
I really love drawing long hair, but not a lot of my characters have long hair. Because it's like, I often either draw guys with short hair or like really curly hair and that ends up being just a little bit shorter. I don't know why. It's like as much as I love long hair, I don't give a lot of people long hair. <laughs> Flares are wild. Imagine having a flail. Just having it. Yeah, I'm a very big fan of just kind of like long hair. Tip for when you're drawing any kind of weapon or anything like that, like kind of long that somebody has to hold, draw the entire thing during the sketch. Don't just draw one end and then the other, right? Make it go through the hand so then you know that you're getting them on the right spot. Right. I'm kind of looking at I have halberds off to the side as well just so I kind of know what I'm doing this is a fantasy weapon so exactly so what I am going to be drawing makes absolutely no sense and I do not care <laughs> I'm kind of going with a ring theme you can hear me got plasma gun plasma guns are also pretty sick I've already started drawing the weapon, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it'd be pretty cool to have like a sci-fi kind of warrior character. She, I've already kind of drawn her as more of like a traditional kind of, like she's from the desert or something. It's kind of the idea that I had in mind. I'm going with a more like, yeah, with the rings kind of motif, I suppose. My favorite weapons, my favorite weapon designs are the ones that feel completely like, what's it called? Um, incoherent. Just like, they, it doesn't feel like it'll work in an actual battle situation ever, but I don't care. <laughs> I think it just looks cool. You know what I'm saying? The game artist approach is what some people, some designers call it. Sci-fi mixed with fantasy is a very cool concept. Now you're, you're right. I love that concept too. Um, I, j I wish that it was done better. Some people are really, really good at doing it and others aren't. Sometimes I feel like it's really, really forced. Um, but it's such a cool concept. This is the kind of idea that it's like, it's futuristic, but there's like still fantasy elements to it. I think that's super cool too. Because when you think of fantasy, you think of kind of like the medieval sort of aspect to it, but then like... I love the, the futuristic kind of feel as well. I think some parts of Breath of the Wild, like Breath of the Wild kind of has that ancient sci-fi technology feel to it, which is really, really cool. I really like the way they did it. They did it because it all feels cohesive. You know what I mean? Like magic mixed with technology. Like, Zelda in Breath of the Wild is, like, a scientist. She's, like, a like a researcher, right? And she's, like... You know... Kind of researching to help with the weaponry for the palace and the kingdom. And I think that's really, really cool. It's, like, that whole kind of ancient technology feel. Like, I've seen people just kind of have, like, the magic and then there's technology there, too. Like, I think that that's kind of a casual, kind of fun way to do it, but it can feel forced. Yeah, Breath of the Wild did it really nicely. Yeah, the setting of Breath of the Wild is unique for the series and interesting. Definitely. I think I, I have the I have the art book for Breath of the Wild, right? So I have, like, the... I think it's, like, The Making of a Warrior, I believe is what it's called. Um, I haven't read it in a long time, but it was... Because I got it a really long time ago as a gift. Um, and they were saying that, like, when they were concepting for Breath of the Wild, they were saying that they wanted to rewrite Link. They wanted to make him this whole new hero. And they wanted to create, like, this ancient, um, like, character who feels more fit for the current generation. Right? So he can feel a little bit less like 
um, handsome, unattainable man, more like a little more androgynous, a little bit more goofy, you know. That was one point that they brought up. They wanted to make him a little more androgynous, which is really cool. Managed to make him a little more feminine in some aspects. I guess that's kind of obvious with Gerudo Town, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, not perfect, but pretty good. Um, I still, like, it obviously, I believe that it deserved Game of the Year when it won. I believe it was 2016 when it won. Um, definitely deserved it. Gorgeous game. I still play it to this day. It's just really, really good. Um, my favorite Zelda game is The Wind Waker, just because I'm yeah, it's near and dear to my heart. <laughs> the Wind Waker is just kind of dumb, and I, I love it because of that, you know? That Link is just so sassy. I got as a gift, too. Creating a champion. That's the one. Yeah, creating a champion. I love the concept that they had where they, like, drew Link as, like, this modern guy. And they just put him on a motorcycle. I think that was kind of funny. <laughs> and then they decided to scrap the green altogether and make him, like, a like blue instead which is also really cool yeah uh re uh, two reasons why i'm talking about breath of the wild right now a lot one is because you know weapons and whatever two is because i realize i'm kind of based in the snake girl of the, the, the gerudo a little bit the gerudo warriors <laughs> i'm like kind of like the ah the legend of zelda cdi game um the legend of link i believe is what it's called or just zelda cdi yeah that one's cursed. <laughs> Majora's Mask is my favorite Wind Waker is awesome too. Yeah, I've never played Majora's Mask. I, I wanted to play the remake and then I just never did. <laughs> Will excuse me, princess. Oh, golly. <laughs> the animations. I think excuse me, princess was from the animated show, not the CDI game. I'm not certain. Because there was a show, and that one was also pretty cursed. <laughs> yeah, I'm realizing that I'm kind of- she kind of looks like the Gerudo Desert Warriors. And that's okay, because those characters are the best. <laughs> I made the same joke. Yeah. No, it's a- it's a- it's good. It's good. Alright, we're almost done with this, because I want to keep her out just really soon. I don't want to give her too much. Yes, but it's the same style, really. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> All right. With that said, we're at the top of the hour. So if you did not know, we are not only a YouTube channel, but we are an art studio too. So if you'd like to check out all the things that we offer, because we offer classes and we offer camps, which are coming up in a couple, actually, no, they start next week. <laughs> um, but I believe there are still spots and sign up spots. So if you would like to check out those, I teach all of the more intensive camps. So that's all of the um, teenage camps and stuff. Well, not all of them, but I teach a few, all the classes that I teach during the summer are the teen intensives. Um, so they are going to be a little bit more advanced, kind of similar to these past few live streams. But if you'd like to check those out, be sure to check out the link in the description for our website. Um, and if you would like to see the final, if you'd like to download the final for this one and the lesson that we learned about um, earlier, then be sure to check out the link in the description for our Discord, where you can check all of those out. We'll also post them on Instagram afterwards, where you can take a look at them there. Um, but if you'd like to download them, keep them saved, and do whatever you want with them, they will be JPEGs, which will be up on Discord. However, if you would like access to my layers, if you would like to see this um, and check out how I organize my layers, check out how I do everything there, you are going to have to go to our Patreon, which is where we will be. Um, for some of our tier members, you'll get two of my working files a month, but for others, you're only going to get one. Um, um, so be sure to check out there for other kind of perks you can get. Everybody gets behind the scenes um, action for our, or most people get behind the scenes um, stuff from our studio, like upcoming live streams and other things that we do behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, be sure to check those out. Some of our tiers also have limited spaces, so be sure to check those out before they are gone. All right. Let's get back into this then. I believe we're gonna start with the lines now. I want to do something a little more gritty. Um, issue is is that the like as much as I love the G fan, it's not as gritty as I wish it was. Oh no, I said G fan. I typed in G. That's not what I use for my liner. Like I can change it, but it's just not as nice. 
Discord command isn't working. It's okay, it's a link in the description. <laughs> you can find it there. Okay. Yeah. She's gonna be like kind of a sand character. Oh, let's make this kind of like a desert character, then I want her lines to be a little bit messier. I think that'll look a little bit nicer. And also kind of going off of the Toon Link era of Legend of Zelda games. Um, I saw Meltic Days ask who's your fave from Breath of the Wild while I was doing the ad read. Um, I'm gonna say... Oh, that's hard. I'm gonna say Cass, I think. I believe that's his name? The Parrot. <laughs> Oh, with a K. Yeah, Cass. Cass is my favorite. Just the fun recurring character that pops up. He has such a cool design. I love his palette. Very triadic. It's really, really cool. It's bold. It's fun. Great. To be based off of, um, uh, Scarlet Macaw. Right? I think that's really cool. Um, their new take on the Rito is really fun as well, because I know that the Rito and the Wind Waker were very different, and the Rito and every other game are really, really different, but I think that the, their new take on the Rito is really fun. It's a really cool, interesting look. Cass, yeah, yeah. Same with the, the Zora. The Zora were terrifying. From earlier games, I love the way they did the Zora this time, actually, you know, incorporating real animals. I love the stingrays. Whenever you'd see like a stingray Zora, those are really cool. And there was like the Sidon is the best. Sidon is the best. Sidon, my beloved. Dude, I was so like, <laughs> when I first got Breath of the Wild, I was like, cool, how long is it until I meet Sidon? I went in completely blind other than knowing that Sidon existed, right? And that the Gerudo town existed. Those are the only two things that I knew about. Like Link's Gerudo outfit and Sidon. And I was like, cool, how long is it until I meet Sidon? He's such a cool design. Like, I love Sidon's design as well. As much as I love Cass. Like, I prefer Cass, just because, like, I am just, like, a bias to birds. But <laughs> Cass is just really, really fun as well. Or, sorry, Sidon is really, really fun as well. The current king, as well, he's based off of a whale, I think, are really, really cool. I love the Koroks. I really want a Korok Kuro plushie. I have a Korok charm that I should probably put on my phone. Um, right now it's Basil from Amori who's hanging off my phone. But, um, yeah, maybe I should, now that I'm thinking about uh, Wind Waker more and Breath of the Wild and Zelda. The Korok forest was just a really great place to be. Would you rather have they kept the gray of his concept art or keep the red? Oh, I I don't remember. Mm, it's been a while since I've looked at that book. I don't remember what it looks like. Honestly, I think the red looks really, really great. Especially because Breath of the Wild is like, uh, it's a little bit more muted compared to other um, Zelda games, if you really think about it, right? They use a lot of bright, bright colors in other Zelda games. Um, and with Sidon being a splash of red, because the Zora area is very, very blue, right? That red, that added red and hints of yellow makes because the entire game is very, very triadic. If you kind of look around, right? It's very triadic and complementary, um, especially with the ancients, right? They're like a deep orange contrasted against like a, like a bright blue, right? So his palette, because he's a brighter red than the rest of the other red Zora. It really makes him feel a little bit more regal. It makes him seem a little bit more standout-ish. So I think that, that the red was a really good choice um, compared to that because he's also contrasted against some dull yellows and some blues. So he's like triadic just like Cass is, but Cass is very, very obviously triadic. You'll design a Thunder Blight. Yes, all the Blight characters are so, so good. But yeah, the whole game, very, very triadic. You think of the Blight characters, right? Kind of a yellowy orange overall, right? But they have like hints of bright blue and very hints, like very st um, striking bits of red, right? Triadic. They liked, they really like their triadic colors, Nintendo, right? <laughs> a lot of their games are very, very triadic, if you really think about it. Um, Mario is a very good example of really triadic 
kind of colors. If you don't know anything that I'm talking about, we have a color video about it, <laughs> which is in our on our channel. Um, so if you'd like to kind of understand a bit more about color theory and palettes, you can check that out. Um, if you're not sick of my voice and me raving about the colors of Breath of the Wild <laughs> um, and Nintendo, but yeah, definitely. Um, like a lot more younger games, games for a younger audience will use triadic colors. If you notice that a lot of games um, that are meant for older audiences have very, very dull, dull colors. They like to use complementary colors. Um, think of like The Last of Us, Detroit Become Human. Um, uh, God of War as well. They love their complementary colors. And more often than not, um, <laughs> a complementary color, a, comp uh, a concept artist's favorite palette complementary combination is blue and orange. Look up game art cons game concept art. Ninety percent of the time, it's going to be blue and orange, <laughs> right? Just look up anything. Hello, Sifo, welcome in. I just God, they kept his little whistle. Yeah. Um, hey Jesse, I really watch your videos live, even though I'm always setting reminders for them, but best believe I've been binging them on after. I appreciate the work you're doing. Thank you, Sifo. Welcome in, and I'm glad that you enjoy. I'm kind of bumbling on about <laughs> color theory right now, but I'm glad that you enjoy what we're putting out. Um, I may be here in front of the curtain, but behind it is a whole team of us, so I'm glad to hear that. All our hard work is paying off. <laughs> kind of going with the disconnected look with the lips here. I think that looks kind of fun. Because I'm hoping when I mimic this, because the white lip python is called the white lipped because it has, you know, white lips. I'm going to do the same thing on this character. I think that might look kind of fun. I'm probably going to do some scales on her face as well. I know that a lot of people who like to draw um, reptilic kind of characters like to add scales onto the face. Yes, we have an Elements of Art playlist. Thank you for reminding us, Aaron. If you would like to check out all the other Elements of Art that we have talked about, including the Color Theory one, um, be sure to check that out. Do we actually have a command for that? Oh my god, we do. That's crazy. I didn't even know we did. I get kind of intense when I line hair, so hopefully it, wasn't, it won't take this long. Because I want to get to the coloring, but this character is going to be take a while to line, I think. If absolutely anything, I'll put a mask on her. Maybe that actually might look cooler. What do you guys think? You think I should do kind of like a bone looking mask instead? I can maybe mimic that or you think that's too much? Because <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I'm a little bit scared of doing white lipstick. her mask. Well, she's a snake, so it'll probably look like the mandibles, but I'm kind of thinking of like kind of imitating that. The mask? Okay. Okay, then let me finish the hair first and I'll do another layer on top. I'm trying to mask on mine. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna concept a mask for this one, too. Oh, you know what might be fun, then? Maybe we'll switch this to a a fantasy cyberpunk kind of thing. Because then I can make the downwards facing gator mask. Because then maybe I can make like a cool kind of 
cyberpunky looking mask. I'll see. I'll see what I can do. Because I love drawing neons, so I might do something glow that glows. Because I know the, the white lip python isn't venomous, but I think it'd look cool. <laughs> it kind of has big fangs, you know. Big glowing fangs, you know. Sorry about that. Yo, look at the queen. <laughs> hello, welcome in. Uh, or welcome back. I don't know what you're apologizing for, but hello. Look at that queen. She do be a queen. Yeah, we'll see what I what happens when I get to coloring. Maybe we'll do some glows. We'll do some glows together. Remember everyone, don't rely on your correction for everyone. For everything. Correction isn't everything. Sometimes it's speed and technique. See that correction level that I got on? Exactly. <laughs> Don't focus on your correction so hard. I know I leave it on for a lot of videos, but... Sometimes it's good to train yourself not to use it, ever. Or all the time, at least. Correction helps, but sometimes it slows me down. So a lot of the times I like to just not use it. focusing on these earrings. I'm like, <laughs> uh, as much as I love drawing earrings, man. I literally don't care how impractical these earrings are for a warrior. <laughs> Again, game artist design. Thank you, thank you. I apologize because I always seem to get cold for dinner when things get wild. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's all good. I'm glad you can make it back. They come and they go. You come and you go. You know, you have the option. And this will always be still up on the channel afterwards. You can always rewatch. I was about to point out you raised too much. Yeah. Um, don't worry. I <laughs> 32 correction smooths my lines, but also fits my line speed, so it almost feels like it's not there, so it's kind of the best both worlds, I guess. Yeah. Usually for me, it's like 20 and below, 25 and below. If I go above that, it means I'm really struggling that day, but a lot of the times I like to just kind of keep my correction at zero. Um, correction at zero in Photoshop. Um, sometimes it's a, like, if I'm kind of lining quick, then it's a max of like maybe... 15, 10, something like that. Um, correction on Photoshop is a lot weaker compared to Medibang. Um, so a 40 correction on uh, Photoshop feels like a 30 correction on Medibang. Um, personally, I like that a little bit more. But, because there's more intervals. But it's okay. How can I not come back to Epic Art Nerds? True. I'm using a pen tablet or display. I am using a screen tablet. Um, I am working with a Cintiq 13 HD. It is refurbished. Um, so instead of the 1200 that it normally is, we got it for 200 bucks. Um, but I've been using it since I was in like grade 11. So it's it's been like, you know, a long time since I got this one. Um, Oh no, how long has it been? I guess it's been about four or five years now. Yeah, if you're 16, yeah, so it's been about four years now. Um, yeah, I love this thing. Um, I love my Cintiq. I'm hoping to get a Surface so then I can travel with um, something with a pen display. Personally, I'm not a big fan of iPads, just the way they handle. Um, like I have, my one of my close friends has an iPad and I've worked with Procreate on it. Um, but iPads scare me too much, so I'm just like... <laughs> I'm also not a big fan of uh, Apple UI. I 
I point that out. Um, I think self-sabotage a lot. Just if you want to ask you something on stream, do you prefer Insta or Discord? I prefer Discord if you'd like to message me on the um, server. Um, I am okay with pings. Usually. Please just keep it on topic. <laughs> Usually. Um, I'll specify if I'm not okay with things, but generally I'm alright with them, especially if you need critique for anything. Um, but yeah, I prefer Discord. Um, Insta messaging is okay too, I just usually prefer when it's on Discord. Um, the Wing Canvas Instagram is also not me. So if you are finding me on Wing Canvas's Instagram, I am not the one who runs that. I have my own personal. Aaron, how did you discover Wing Canvas? Good question. Because I don't know that one. <laughs> he works for us. He's currently a volunteer here. Oh, you found it from your friends. Epic swag. The, were they like past students here or were they like did they volunteer here like for co-op that was tough i don't know why i had so much trouble with that <laughs> I kind of like that when I speed up, you can see more of the roughness of the G pen. I feel like that feels a little bit nicer. It's a little bit rougher. Oh, they were co-ops. Okay, cool. Hmm, maybe I knew them or not. If they're old, if they were, if they co-opted pre-2019, then I don't know them. <laughs> As well as I saw the old location. Yeah. The old IRL location. If you're curious to see what the old IRL location looks like, we have old videos on the channel that you can probably still check out. Yeah, I don't know. I want to make sure if DMs work for you if you'd rather not have those on any platform. Yeah. Generally, it's just easier if you just ping me on the server. Like, if you ever need to DM me, 90% of the time it should just be for, like, admin issues or whatever. Eat this up just a smidge. I might end up going kind of over time for this one because I really do want to color it. The only thing is that um, Medibang's free transform is not as powerful as Photoshop, so I want to see. I may break the rules and go into Photoshop very, for a very short period of time. If I'm really struggling, but I'm tr I'm trying to avoid that at all costs, but I may have to at some point. Not you got yeah. Oh my god. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's the only thing with correction at zero, so I'm gonna have to do a little more undos. I didn't realize how low DPI I made this. Usually it's like I like to work really high. Um, it's okay. I'm gonna live. Yeah, 
try not to overline your hair especially if you're kind of trying to like make it look a little bit more flowy right you can add some extra lines on the inside but if you add too many then it may look a little bit too crowded um so usually where the majority of your lines are going to be within hair kind of near the end the extremities so that's at the end of your hair right um with where your hair like stops or at your roots that's where most of your little details are going to be so most of the time you kind of want to leave like the the middle sections of your hair untouched maybe add a strand like a like a line or two within them but usually you want to just rely on color <laughs> question was going to be something not admin related more art related but glad i didn't just ping you on server dm you i'm cool with server pings if you want me to just not not like as long as it's not a dm but a server ping totally cool if you have an art related question Just not DMs. <laughs> I will specify when it stop when it starts becoming a problem because like right now it's like fine I don't care but like if it ever starts becoming an issue then I will have to bring it up. Um, but as it stands right now. Go ahead. <laughs> Ping me on Discord. I'm okay with that. As long as it's on server. I started listening to a lot of slowed songs. I don't know why. Like anti-nightcore. I think that's a great name for it. Anti-nightcore. Because it's like, you know, nightcore was speeding it up. And now we're in the era of slowing stuff down. It just sounds nicer. You know what I mean? It gives it a different energy. I see. Yeah, Jesse, I'm taking some of your intensive classes. I saw. I checked the uh, the attendance so, so I could plan for assets that I needed to create. Mm, you're going to be in one of my actual classes. Good luck. <laughs> I'm kidding. There's a few students that I recognize on my attendance, so I'm excited. I love teaching intensives or like just kind of like um more tricky classes especially like character design and stuff like that i don't remember which ones you joined i think it was anyway you joined a couple of them so excited to have you on ah illustration figure drawing okay isn't that called decor decor is another name for it some people just call it slowed some people call it decor some people call it anti-nightcore this is going to be stream 22-1. It was kind of private, I think. I don't want to both of us in an awkward situation. Ah, I see. Okay. noon core noon core is literally just the same song <laughs> it's just the same it's just a repost of the original song yeah art i'm cool with um art advice as well generally i'm cool with that um i think the only thing that i'm not okay I'm, I'm trying not to open up my DMs quite as much. Um, but generally, I am okay with DMs. The only thing that I'm not okay with is just, like, you know, because um, I try not to make it, you know, uh, like, I try to keep, like, a professional distance, I guess. Um, but if you have, like, act like artistic questions or if you need advice for stuff like that, I am okay with that. Um, obviously, my DMs are not open for, you know, private tutorials. I can't do that. I'm sorry. Um, like, I don't have the time for that. But if you need, like, a quick advice kind of thing, anything, like, I'm generally okay with that. Um, but please keep in mind as well, I am not your therapist. Right? I can't help you with very super, super personal questions. But um, I can help with, you know, career paths or 
tips to improve and stuff like that. I can I can help with that. But yeah, please keep in mind I am not your therapist, right? I can't solve your issues. <laughs> I took psychology in high school and that's it. <laughs> but you know. Yuri, I want to take classes. Yuri, you are also teaching during the summer. <laughs> Yuri will be teaching our animations intensives during the summer as well, I believe. So she'll be taking over some of those. I believe she's also teaching digital something? Or is that Felicia? Not certain. One of y'all is teaching that one. I'm thinking it out for my brush. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of our teachers also take, or a bunch of our um, staff also take classes from other instructors and staff members. Because it's always good to learn off of other artists, you know? That's how you learn. It's from other artists. Yeah, it looks feathered. That was, so is that. Ugh. Struggles. I want to be a student. Join my classes, Siri. I'll actually give you grades. I'll mark you harsher than the rest of my kids. <laughs> it's a joke. I never mark any. I never judge anyone harsher than others. I just judge differently. It depends on skill level. I try to make sure that everyone is given feedback at the rate that they can probably take it, right? Someone who's just learning anatomy won't be as refined as someone who's been doing it for years, right? So obviously I'll give different feedback based off of that. But yes, classes, you also get feedback. Just be sure to check those out. I did this arm wrong. Oopsies. This should be interlocked. This should be back here. Yes, that's a little bit more correct. I believe. Yes, yes, something like that. Understandable, it's good to have professional design. Yeah, no, it's not that deep. You should just go without saying, Order the internet is a therapist. Yeah, unless you are professionally a therapist, <laughs> have that in your title, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Look, I can help with a lot of things, and sometimes, like, the stuff that I talk about in classes, my students are like, Oh, it's, it's Wellness Day with Jesse again. <laughs> but I am not your therapist, right. Especially if you're kind of, this goes for everyone, if you have like an influencer who like, you know, you really, really adore, right? They're not your therapist. Don't rely on them for mental health, right? Please get professional help if you need it. It's great to ask for help from trusted friends as well, but they are also probably not therapists. So don't rely on others for assistance because not only does that put a lot of pressure on them it you may not be getting the exact help that you need <laughs> and how does that make you feel i don't know aaron <laughs> Yeah, watch out for your mental health, especially artists, you know? Know when to take breaks, take frequent breaks. Make sure that you're not overexerting yourself too much. You know, we have to keep up with the grind, I guess, but don't glamorize it. Glamorizing a grind only makes you feel worse. Yeah, I'm trying to be a little bit grittier, a little bit messier with my lines, and I don't think it's working. 
pulls on glasses and pulls on a clipboard. I'm getting new glasses. I'm excited. I haven't had new glasses in two years. <laughs> Which is like way too like long since I've gotten a new prescription and my prescription has changed so much that my doctor was like, um, I want to put you on a slightly less intense prescription just because I'm scared of giving you something so different too quick. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Cause she was like, your last prescription didn't say you had astigmatism, so like this one, this time you do though, so like you need to probably change that, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> astigmatism, for those who don't know, is that your eye is shaped differently, like the entire eye is shaped differently, so then you need, I think it's the entire eye, it's either the entire eye or your pupil is shaped a little bit differently, um, so my eye is shaped kind of like a football, it's a little bit flatter, so I need a different prescription because it affects my vision, haha. <laughs> I'm also nearsighted, so, you know, I think it's nearsighted, where I, I can see stuff close up but not so much far away. I don't have eyes as bad as my dad, but definitely not as good as my mom, you know? <laughs> you see from Jesse, the anime glasses tilt true. Avatar Jane is just with glasses. I've had glasses since before I worked at Wayne Campus, but um, I just don't wear them all the time. I mostly just wear them to drive. Because usually I can see just fine without them. Oh, and also to look at a, like, at a far away screen, so like the television. That is when I wear glasses. I feel called out about the glasses prescription. It's okay. My prescription isn't, it still is not too, too strong. Was certainly stronger than it was when I was uh, 17, so, or 18. I have that problem too. Let's go, astigmatism game! <laughs> Rip to us, dude. I think a bunch of people in the studio have astigmatism, so pretty epic. Okay, now I'm gonna turn on my correction because something long and snaking like this is hard to do without correction because especially with long bodies you want to do it in one stroke like i know that you don't have to but it really it's beneficial if you do this is why this is why i never draw snakes traditionally <laughs> That's a joke. I've done I've done snakes traditionally, but man, it's hard. Cause I can never get it right on the first try. Imagine someone goes and wearing glasses since birth. Without my glasses, I feel blind. Blind. Yeah, no, I've, I, I'm only a recent glasses where I used to have really, really sharp vision. And then, like, I started looking at a screen more. <laughs> it's okay. All artists' die, eyes die at some point. Goodness. Uh, huh. Trying to go a little bit box here. Just a smidge. Uh, no. Let's go. There we go. There we go. That's nicer. Um, my eye doctor said that I have 20-20 vision, but I couldn't predict the pandemic, so I don't know what it was on about. Thank you, Aaron, for that joke. <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> I used to have really close to 20-20 vision when I was, like, 16, and my doctor was like, you technically don't really need glasses. You have really close to 20-20 vision. I was like, um, but I really wanted glasses because <laughs> I just like the fashion of them. So I bought fake ones. Then my brother sold them from me and he started wearing them all the time. Now he has his own fake glasses that he wears all the time. They're like golden rims. I used to always want Ray-Bans. Now I have kind of like rip off Ray-Bans. Oh, this is really close to a tangent. Let's fix that. Um, yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I still couldn't see the price of something on the cash register without my glasses. That's that's valid. My dad couldn't either. My dad has really, really bad vision. And it's always changing as well, so he can't get LASIK. Like, he can't get um, laser eye surgery. Which he wants so bad because he hates wearing glasses. 
Her head is still too large. I feel like it doesn't fit the rest of the body. Like, I need to shrink it down just a little bit, I think. I'll do it and see if I like it or not. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's a bit better. Fits her a little bit more. Makes her feel a little bit more like an adult. There we go. Nice. Okay, and then I gotta do this. I might just do the... Yeah, let's lower this down. Because I am lazy and don't want to have to single stroke it. Booga booga. This needs to be wider though. I think. I changed the shape of the hand as well though. So I might have to fix this anyway. I'm gonna make this tighter in anyway so it feels a little bit like a stronger grip. Tony likes, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Guys, be sure to like this live stream, subscribe for more videos like this, hit that um, notification bell epically. <laughs> I realize I never say that out of all the like. <laughs> Promotional stuff that I say I never say to subscribe. <laughs> Whoopsies. Is this hand too low? No, it's actually okay. I think it's just the way my sketch looks. Yeah, out of all the promotional stuff I say, I never say to subscribe. Anyway, guys, subscribe. <laughs> if you aren't already. I'm pretty sure most of you are. Not all of you. Be sure to smash that like button. Hit that bell for notifications. <laughs> Epically. <laughs> Epic swag. I'll never say that again, I'm so sorry. No. <laughs> I oh, I say epic swag ironically all the time. I think it's so funny. And everyone around me hates it. It's like, Stop saying epic swag. I'm like, no, never. <laughs> Ah, epic swag. I've watched too many YouTube videos just ingrained into my system. Literally, right? I still have, like, our old outro basically memorized. I have the Elements of Art um, outro memorized, even though I only recorded it maybe three times because I just kept on using the same audio, but, like, the... I have it basically memorized. When I had when I did have to re-record it and just change like one line, I could do the rest of it without the the script. <laughs> the word swag at this point is worse than 2020 choke I made. Yeah, honestly, right? Like, I don't know anyone who says swag unironically. Like, if you say swag unironically, I'm sorry. You belong in 2012. Like, I don't... <laughs> I found some of my old 2012 sketchbooks and I had swag written in there unironically. I was very upset. <laughs> I was like, fifth grade me needs to stop. You know? The instant I see it, it's just pain. You know? It's like looking at a children's place t-shirt. If you want to feel old, you look at a children's place t-shirt. <laughs> oh my god, I may only be able to do flats on this one. I don't think I can shade it. This lining took a lot longer than I thought it would. The source fed nerd in church flows out. I don't know if you watch that channel. I've never even heard of it. I haven't heard a channel intro in so long. Like, all the YouTubers that I watch don't have channel intros. <laughs> they just kind of get into it or say th something dumb. Or their intro is different every time. I watch all the kind of, like, quote-unquote OGs. I watch a lot of Markiplier, a lot of Jacksepticeye, a lot of PewDiePie, a lot of Jax films. 
Who else did I watch? <laughs> Someone who doesn't fit with the collection that I've already said. I watched a lot of Delightful. Um, offline TV, I also watch the streamers, but I don't actually watch any of the streams. I just watch the channel. <laughs> Ironically, I actually don't watch a lot of streamers, or streams in general, just because they can't hold my attention. I'm a bit... I have a bit of a short attention span. You'll be shunned, I understand. <laughs> the idea of you getting mad at a comic you made nine years ago is really funny to me. It is funny! <laughs> I feel old just by hearing the youth scream outside, honestly. I feel old just by going to my cut, like seeing my cousins who are all under 10. You know how I felt old when I lost in Mario Kart to my six year old cousin, okay? I didn't, I didn't lose, okay? I got second, <laughs> he got first. I hadn't played Mario Kart for the Wii U in a really long time. <laughs> That's my excuse, okay? They play every day. <laughs> I mean, I won every time after that, but still, I was like the first time I played in like two years and I lost. And I was like, are you kidding me? This kid plays weird. Weird combination. 100cc hard comps, but I respect it. Top of the board. He hasn't said that in ages. The top of the morning to you. He hasn't said that in so long. It was an OG channel that got cancelled or sold to a different company. Oh, I see. Give him Rainbow Road. What did we go on? We didn't go on Rainbow Road. It was um Uh it was the it was one of the temples. It was like I don't remember the name of it, but it was a temple. It was in like I don't remember which cup it was. Mario Kart like Wii U, but like Mario Kart 8, I guess. But it, like I was so mad. <laughs> I was like I looked at my brother and I was like, I got second? And he's just laughing at me. And I was so mad. I won after that. We went to um, Dragon Roost Temple, I believe. Jack is falling out of his OG roots. Honestly, I'm okay with it. He's mellowing out and so am I, you know? I find that all the YouTubers I watch are aging with me. And I guess that's why I prefer them, I suppose. My cousin talks about all these shortcuts and platforms. I'm like... I'm like, all dudes, how do you know how to do this? I don't know how to log in. Understandable. I still ref I still refuse to get a TikTok. Just because of the horror stories I hear about it. I'm too scared. Like, being an artist on TikTok sounds like impending doom, and I'm too afraid to go there. I should just reflect this. I'm not gonna draw it twice. Oops. There we go. Can I flip it now? There we go. <laughs> That's so annoying. I don't have like a vertical flip. At some point I will challenge you to Mario Kart. I'm okay with that. I have Nintendo online, so that means I'm gonna be training now. <laughs> Sonic Heroes and Spyro. I had Spyro and the Dark Moon, I think, and then I got stuck on one puzzle. I could never solve it. Part of me wants to try it again. But I was like, I'm too lazy. <laughs> I don't know where the cartridge is anymore. <laughs> when I was younger, I really liked Yoshi's Island. I really liked Pokemon. And I was a really big fan of Kirby. And I am still a really big fan of Kirby. For my birthday, my best friend got me a giant Kirby. And it is the best thing. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. <laughs> I'm good with the platforms I have. I'm not ready for the more wild ones. Big mood. Oh, I'm on the wrong way. That's okay. That was this one. Anyway. I needed to merge it. 
Yeah, when I was younger, I played a lot of, like, the more Nintendo-y games. Like, I, Sonic... Oh, man, Sonic Heroes. Because Sonic Heroes got, like, a remake. And it was one of the first, like, pretty good Sonic games in a long time. <laughs> Corby, Corby. Yeah, my love for Kirby is so intense. Like, I don't think, I don't, for those of you who are new, nobody, nobody who has been on this channel for more than, <laughs> more than, or less, more than, sorry, more than like two weeks doesn't know how much I love Kirby. If you've ever been on more than one of these live streams, you know how much I love Kirby. But, or if you've known me for long enough, then you know. <laughs> How much I was like, it's it's terrible, but at the same time I don't care, you know, <laughs> kind of that kind of vibe, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this line, these lines are a lot thinner compared to the bodies, which is bothering me. But I know that I don't really have the time to fix it. I don't have the time to fix it, I say. Continue. Proceeds to do so anyway. <laughs> Man, I was hoping to get to, like, proper shading. I don't think I will. The color is kind of essential for the white with python, though. I also said that I was going to do a mask as well, but I might not have time to design it. That's kind of annoying. Ugh. So be it. That's what I get, I guess. You know, wait, I got a remake. Oh, yeah, Sonic Heroes got a remake a while ago, I think. I think? Wait. No, I'm thinking of a different one. I think. What was the. Oh, my bad. I think I was thinking of Sonic Forces. <laughs> my bad. No, Sonic Heroes is the one with Big the Cat, right? I might be wrong. It's been a while. <laughs> Faith Indie Games, go. Ah, uh, Faith. <laughs> All, all, both of them. Faith 1 and 2. Uh, Omori is really, really good. Um, there's another one that I really like that I don't remember the name of. I'm too lazy to pull up my Steam. Um, the Something of Edith Finch. I don't remember what that one's exactly called. The Something of Edith Finch. That one I really like too. Uh... Undertale, I guess. I don't know if it's still considered indie. <laughs> but that one was really, really good when it first came out. Delta Rune is still a really good, but I'm waiting for the next chapter, and that's okay, too. Um, yeah, I've always preferred indie. I <laughs> are. Sonic Heroes with the Cat. Okay, then, yeah, no, sorry. I was thinking of something else. My bad. I apologize. Froggy. I know that people, like, I think I've only watched the Game Grumps play through of that one. I just know that that <laughs> beat the cat. Bruh. <laughs> I don't know much about Sonic. I have a few friends who were really, really into Sonic, and I wasn't really a huge YouTube fan. I guess because I was on more, like, Team Nintendo, I suppose, rather than, like, Team Sega. Um, that's okay, though. Oops, I did this wrong. LOL. Uh, what kind of match? The shake. So she's a desert dweller. I don't want to give her. That's really orange. Let's kind of switch that to there. Well, I mean, I kind of want to make her look sun kissed, but also. I don't want it to be too, too intense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Edith Finch was really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I was substituting Jesse's class. I said, Jesse must really like Kirby. <laughs> and one of the students said, Jesse liking Kirby is an understatement. <laughs> Looked around the class and saw like a lot of Kirby demos. I was laughing so hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which student? Actually, no, you can't say names. Um, I can assume who said that, though. <laughs> nice drawing. Thank you, Jing. Welcome in. Just you gotta do the blue mask thingy. That was with the magic wand. So magic wand you just select. You can continue to select by holding down shift and just keep clicking. Make sure that it's referencing the canvas when you have that. 
and then like when you're ready, um, I also have it set to expand to, oh, I have it set to expand to zero? Uh-oh, usually I have that set to expand to two. Uh-oh, that's not good. Can I select like this? Can I do this? No, I can't, darn. Ugh, okay, hang on. I did this wrong, my bad, my bad. Um, but yeah, usually you can select a bunch of times, holding down shift. Usually you want to set your expand to two. Actually, I should do that now. Yeah, so then oh, you're not exactly up against everything. Oh, let's do it to one this time again, because that's a little bit more time. Whoops. Oh well. So then it doesn't go straight up against your lines, so then you can kind of get rid of more. So it isn't quite as annoying to deal with. I realize I did that wrong. Whoops. Just select everything that you need, and then you hit Control shift i on the keyboard, and then you would fill it in with the paint bucket. And this time I just need to get rid of certain- No! Ah! I did it wrong again. It's okay. Sorry, that might have been loud when I shouted. <laughs> um, oops. But yeah. Hopefully that helps a little bit, even though I did it a little bit hectically. Oh, I did that. Boo. Except protect the alphas on when I can't erase properly. There we go. Usually when I do that, it's very awkward and selects random parts. You need to make sure that your lines are really clean. That that doesn't work if your lines are a little bit sketchier. You need to be a very clean line artist in order for that to work. Because the wand is very picky. You need to make sure that your tolerance is set to like almost zero. And your lines need to be like very clean and closed. Same here, yeah. Hello, Shadow Fire Dragon, welcome in. Um, but yeah, no, if you have feathered lines or anything that's a little bit more stylized, less like super, super clean, you're gonna have a hard time. Cause it won't work if you do that. Yeah. You gotta be ultra clean. <laughs> So it doesn't work for everyone. It doesn't work for all my lines either, don't worry. It only works for lines that are like this and cleaner. Because these are still a little bit messy. They're not as clean as usually I have. All right, it's 6.02. I think I'm only gonna be able to do flats for this one. I thought I'd be able to do more. That's so annoying. I'm a little bit scared to do the the white lips. Like, I kind of like them, but also, like, I don't want to, you know. <laughs> I don't think I need to say more. <laughs> um, so I guess I gotta do the, the mask. I am probably, I said I was gonna do the mask, too. So I'll do that. That means I'm gonna go way over time for this one. Thanks, bro. No worries. magic wand trick is rough. It's not, it doesn't work for everything. It can get a little bit finicky at points. I just use the paint bucket tool. What am I doing? Reference canvas. Have my, oh, actually that's fine. Expand it too. Yeah, what's nice about Medibank is I have to expand for the paint bucket now. Yeah, this is Medibank paint. This is a free one, not my usual. But 
it's free and it's accessible to everyone so we use it for this channel the thing with the white lip python is it's actually a very dark black color even though you know it's iridescent like this its base is kind of a deep dull brown black color kind of a gray cool yeah this program's not too bad um like compared to photoshop obviously it's not as good but um i use photoshop and clip studio um but it's great especially if it's because it's free it's open source it's really easy to download really beginner friendly obviously the shift from this one to more advanced programs can be intimidating so it's definitely like a bit harder to get used to everything when you use a a simpler program to start out but that's totally okay that's why some people like uh procreate because it's like er no that's right procreate because it's like very simple it's time for the rainbow we're almost there i just gotta color in the staff and i also gotta do the scales first let's turn up the tolerance a little bit let's turn it up to your 60 ish whoops Oh no, I need to turn it to zero or one. That's a nice thing about Medibank is that it has like this kind of like it separates the tolerance from an expand, which is nice. trying to figure out where I want which colors. Do I want a splash of blue? Actually maybe I do. I think the blue might look nice because it's very monochromatic. The entirety of her is very monochromatic. I have a little bit of blue somewhere. Yes? No. Actually? Hmm. Mm. Ah. Looks a little strange when it's like just on one side that's like a little bit maybe this will look a little bit nicer yeah that feels a little more equal okay now it's time for scales this one's gonna be tricky because I, the free transform on medibank is not as powerful as other programs so it might not work as intended i will do my best Scales um, on snakes are very diamond shaped. So I'm trying to kind of keep that. And <laughs> then you just. Kind of move it. They kind of go a little bit off to the side. Um, I've also got a free transform a little bit. Yeah, the free transform is just not as powerful. It's like, this would work a little bit easier if it was on a different program. And I gotta remove clipping too, huh? <sighs> this trick might not work. That's the thing. It's a little bit annoying because there isn't like oh there is a mesh transform okay hang on i want to see how good this mesh transform is let me transform let me test a little bit because i don't know how well it works scales yes hey just use your figure drawing class like life drawing or some more character design it's gonna be like life drawing so it's gonna be i'm gonna try to focus on realism um with like hints of the ability to stylize and whatnot 
but yeah it is going to focus more on like the realistic portion of drawing as much as I am not a fan of 100% <laughs> realism, realism um, it is really really important to learn so that's kind of what I will be working with at that point skills the best part of a reptile the eyes are a close second yeah you the copy pasting looks super handy control c control v <laughs> same as anything you just kind of select it you control c control v it okay i want to see how well this works hopefully pretty good because i hope that i can use this because that would be oops yeah it's literally just control c control v Like you would on anything else. Okay, let's see how this mesh transform is. Whoops, let's see how this mesh transform is because I don't know how good it is. Hmm, that's not. Bad. It's just not what I wish it was. Okay, wait, let's see. I should have tested this. Oh, there is a vertical link. Okay, that's not that bad then. Okay. Okay, I can work with them. All right. Then let's get to it. Um, fun. This is what it's like. You just like, <laughs> if you're wondering how to do digital art, you just kind of like mess around with it and hope that you can get it done properly. Because sometimes the answer is just, you can't, <laughs> you know? Digital art is great, but it has its limitations. Thanks, no worries. You know, like it can do a lot of stuff, but it isn't foolproof, I suppose. Can I mesh transform this? What are you doing? Select mesh transform, please. Thank you. Oh, let's turn off, cancel, let's turn off vertical link. I didn't mean to do that. Uh... Yeah, it's just not as strong. Normally, because Photoshop has this thing called liquify and liquify you can only do on Photoshop. And what it does is you can, like, literally just grab any point of anywhere and just move it around. It's fantastic. I love Liquify so much. It works brilliantly. And it's Photoshop only. <laughs> so you can't do that on other programs, unfortunately. So it gets tough to do this technique on other programs, but it is all just a little bit faster. Because I am just a little bit too stubborn, I suppose. You should be down here. Yeah, and then you would just continue that. Which is pretty tricky to do, to be fair. Ibis also has liquefied, does it? Yeah. It's kind of a new feature. Okay, cool. So it's good that like other programs have it then too. I don't know how similar it is to Photoshop though. Probably isn't. 
sim very similar. My goodness, it sounds amazing. It's very nice. It's expensive. <laughs> I'm glad that other programs are kind of adding in more Photoshop-y kind of stuff. As much as, like, I love Clip and whatever, I'm a very big fan of the, um, kind of photo editor aspect of Photoshop. Like, I know a lot of people aren't, but, like, I way prefer it. Lots of people prefer Mesh Transform. I'm actually not a huge fan of Mesh Transform. As, like, as nice as it is sometimes, Liquify just has a different kind of feeling because you can kind of just grab it anywhere. Oh, this is going to take ages. How much would you guys care if I went into Photoshop really briefly? Like, just to do the scales. Just so that I can move them around better. Like, I can do this, but it's gonna take a really long time. Just because it just isn't as quick. Because usually we like to stay in Medibang, but this is gonna take a long time if I don't. So how much would you guys care if I switched programs real quick? Do it. You think I should do it? Just switch real quick, just so I can get this done just a little bit faster. You wouldn't mind? Okay. Then let's cancel that, because this is getting really hard to do without it. Oh, I'm so Photoshop dependent. I'm so sorry. Okay, God, give me a moment. I guess you can see what Photoshop looks like then. Go for it. All right, it's opening. Ta-da! This is Photoshop. So this is what I work in most of the time. Um, I'm so sorry. Usually we like to do it in um, Medibang only, but this is getting really annoying to work with in Medibang because Medibang doesn't have the same kind of copy-paste function that Photoshop does. You don't know anything about Photoshop, so it'll just be something new for you. Just do it. Very cool. Hey guys, we're going on a field trip. Yeah, we're going on a field trip to the expensive program. <laughs> uh, I guess this is a good kind of like, hey, this is what it's like when you actually really invest in a program, right? So it looks a little bit different, handles a little bit differently. Right? So it's just a smidge different compared to other programs, you know? I have to press less buttons, I have to do less stuff, you know. So this is Liquify, if I go to filter, Liquify, opens a whole new window. And then what I can do is literally just move everything like that. Oh, I'm gonna have to, yeah, let's just do that because, actually, you know what, no, let's use T so then I can see, yeah, there we go. So I can literally just do that, it's really nice. I can just pinch and squeeze it so then it's a little bit easier to move around. It's just a lot faster. I'm sorry for those who like seeing stuff in Medibang. It's just kind of hard sometimes. <laughs> and I want to get this done. It's like really over time and I don't want to... You see? And then it kind of makes it a little bit a little bit more natural. We've traveled to a dimension, new dimension. Yeah, the photo editor's dimension. I'll go back to Medibang once we move the scales around. I just need to do it for this section. Oh, and I can also work on this one as well. I may have to hand draw some of the scales as well, which is kind of annoying, but that's okay. not a crazy amount of them that I have to hand draw so I can live with that portion. Yeah. 
In hindsight, I should have tested this with all my other live stream prep. <laughs> uh, it's my fault. It's okay. Field trip to Photoshop. <laughs> Yeah, even in Clip Studio, right, it's like you get more functions when you use a more, like, a paid program. Of course, like, um, especially if you're doing digital for the first time. Oh, I should have switched to, let's go back to Liquify. I should have switched to Lines to check for everything. You can switch between which layers you can view and stuff like that. You use Krita and Clip, yeah. Yeah, a lot of Krita users not don't like Photoshop, which is funky. So it's funky that you, you use both. Because usually they don't like it. Oh, let's use... Yeah, look at all my brushes. This is not the difference. Oops. I'm just gonna have to draw in a bunch of these because it's gonna be a little bit harder to mesh these ones. Krita is so intimidating. The UI is really poorly optimized, in your opinion. Krita has a very, very different program compared, or very, very different UI compared to Photoshop and Clip. Really funky that you switch between Clip and Krita. Um, I tried using Krita. I didn't like it either that much. It was very, it was very strange, just the way that it handled to me, um, as somebody who works with Photoshop a lot and somebody who found Clip very, very easy to get the hang of when I first used it. Um, because a lot of its shortcuts were very, very different. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of filling in scales. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really, really different. Um, Photoshop and Clip are not very beginner friendly. That I know, because I know that a lot of people who switch from stuff like Krita and Many Bang and all that find it very, very intimidating. Now these scales have no rhyme or reason. I'm just kind of filling them in. <laughs> yeah. PS is very not f beginner friendly. It's very hard to get used to. I'm just lucky that Photoshop was my very first program um, because I use a completely, totally legal version. Now it's now it's legal, but I used a completely totally legal version when I was younger. Um, currently using Mini Mango Paint Pro, I started doing digital art. I haven't had much opportunity to try out other programs. Yeah, that's fine. You know, I'm I'm lucky that I know how to use a bunch of different programs. I've tested out quite a few. But usually people like to stick to one or two. Like out of all the programs that I've used, Clip and Photoshop are superior. Like I, like just in my opinion, right? Try on every single program out there. I think I'm just trying to stick with Medibank until I can afford paint tools, I. I know so few people who actually pay for paint tools. <laughs> you should. You should pay for programs that are a little more open source by small companies. Smaller companies. Chris is getting better, but I don't want to pay the outrageous cost with Photoshop. That's fair enough. Yeah, Photoshop is a lot of money.
that's why you ha, ha, don't pay. I'm joking, that's a joke. You get a totally, completely legal, 100% legal version. I think I've drawn something on 10 plus programs. Yeah. It's rough. It's hard. You like clip in Photoshop too, Yuri. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing with, um... The shortcuts on Photoshop are a little bit easier to deal with as well. Because on... Many then you have to copy paste. Photoshop you can hold control and alt down and they'll stay on the same layer and you can continue to copy paste it over and over and over. Which is nice. Photoshop's mesh transform is also a little bit different compared to Critas. Or sorry, uh Medibangs. So it handles just a smidge smoother. And you can just continue to do this over and over and over, and it all stays on the same layer. Just a lot quicker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm sorry that we had to take the field trip for a little bit, guys. Like, normally I wouldn't, but just for the sake of making it a little bit quicker, because we're really over time. It's making me nervous how over time it is! <laughs> Photoshop's grid mesh transform is a little bit nicer. Just a smidge easier to deal with, I suppose. I'd rather pay for paint tools side and have all my art being screenshot quality because the limited version doesn't allow saving. Really? I didn't know that. Uh, free versions like though, yeah. Then there's me who just rolls with the free versions of every app. That's fair enough, you know? It's not the- sometimes you just can't, you know? And that's totally fine. Take a time, I'm gonna make a kind of a fun little transition for the end of the tickle as well. just fix that manually. Okay. Allow me to. Sorry, I'm not replying for a second. I gotta focus. <laughs> I'm trying to get this down. There. Okay. Oh, I forgot the few here. That's fine. I can just... layers, turn the clipping. Oops. Oops. I merged that one by accident. Didn't mean to do that. I can delete this now. Delete that. And then I can merge these. And now I can turn the clipping back on. And then 
allow me to select this color. Oops. Change that to I that. Delete this portion. Get rid of that. Draw in the rest of the scales manually. And then we can switch back to Medibang. <laughs> and then do the fun little rainbow portion, which is not that hard. Yeah, that would have taken a lot longer if it was a mini bang. It still took a lot longer than anticipated, but yeah, as well, as quick as digital art is in some aspects, like sometimes you just can't speed stuff up, you know, like sometimes you just can't. Okay, saved. Let's go back to mini bang. All right. What happens if it's far too over time? I just, I, it makes me nervous. <laughs> That's all. Don't worry. It's nothing crazy. Okay. This is a section I'm probably going to have to mix with the lasso tool because I'm realizing now that I put it all on one layer, which maybe I shouldn't have done, but that's okay. So this part is literally just turning on protect alpha and coloring it in with, um, Oops. This part is literally just filling it in. That's right. Control one. Anyway. Um. Oops. Taking E. Yeah. Taking this, turning on Protect Alpha, taking your brush, switching it to an airbrush, and then just filling in the colors that you want. So what the, I can see over here, it's like the yellow is what's... Honestly, I'm gonna actually turn this darker just to start off. And then I'm gonna start adding in my colors. Let's turn this all the way down again. And it's literally just kind of coloring it in on the edges. When you turn on Protect Alpha, it won't affect the area around it. This way you can kind of get a nice gradient in there. And this way it kind of looks a little more subtle as well. It's not as intense. That yellow should be. That orange should be under here instead. I think the greens are kind of close to the center instead. Yeah, this kind of makes it look a little bit duller. Still rainbows, but not as intensely bright. Back home, yeah. <laughs> We're almost done. Almost done. See, kind of gives it this nice oil spill look, right? You can kind of see the difference between this area and the other one. I might actually make that yellow a bit brighter on the edges because I think I want it that way. So I can really make it look like the, the light is standing out a little bit more on some edges. So it really does have like a highlight. Right, it kind of gives it a nice iridescent look. It's gonna be a little bit messy because of um, the lassoing. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's the best I could do. <laughs> oh, right, this should be. I have a color history, don't I? Somewhere. I don't, do I? Maybe I do and I don't remember it. I don't know. It's okay. I should do that with the rest of the scales, actually. Let's just color the rest of them in dark. Which I should have done from the beginning, but it's okay.
Is there a reselect command on Medibank? I have no clue. Because reselect on Photoshop is Control Shift D. flat and I wish I could do the mask but I probably can't and that's fine Maybe I'll just finish this one on my own time. Like, actually do all of the, the shading and whatnot on my own time. But yeah, that's kind of how you do the iridescent scales kind of trick. There is also a way where you can make them look a little more 3D by kind of, like, you know, copy-pasting them, drawing them, and, like, making them a darker color, and then kind of, like, moving them just slightly over so they kind of have that bevel look. Um, which is one way you can do it, but, like, it doesn't always work, especially with this body. I'm not doing it with this one because it won't work in this case. Um, but in some cases you can, and it looks really, really cool. Um, but in this case, I can't, and it'll look weird if I try it. <laughs> Just add a little bit extra to the edges here. It just makes it feel a little bit more intense in some areas. Oops, not here. Oh, I forgot to color in her bracelet. Whoa, whoa, I'll do that. Wow, we went way over time. <laughs> we almost went an hour over time. I'm so sorry. Um. Okay, with that. I think we're done. <laughs> I think we're done with this one. Um, thank you guys so, so much for joining. Um, again, if you'd like to check out this one and these two files as JPEGs, you're going to have to join our Discord. Um, but if you did not know, if you would like to check out all of our classes that we offer, you're going to have to check out our website, which is where we have all of our other offerings. Um, so if you'd like to see all the other stuff that we have to offer, um, I said we because we are a studio. It's not just a YouTube channel. So feel free to check us all out there. Um, and like I mentioned, you're going to, if you want to download this image as a JPEG, you're going to have to check out our Discord. So if you'd like to check out where these files are, where you can download them. They're all there. Um, but you notice that I do have a few layers over here and I've got some layers over here as well. Um, there's also a second image of the tortoise that you might want to see or reference at some point. If you'd like those, you're going to have to check out our Patreon, which is where I post, um, uh, all of my working or not all of them, but some of my working files bi-weekly. Um, but not everyone will get both of the working files. Some people will only get once. If you would like to check out um, all of our offerings, be sure to check them there before all of them are gone because some of them do not have um, or have limited amount of spots. So be sure to check them before they are all used up. Um, but other than that, guys, thank you so, so much for joining this stream. Next week, we are, I think we're doing background art. Um, so if you'd like to check that out, um, I'll see you there. But other than that, thanks so, so much for joining. And I'll see y'all next week. Bye-bye.